So is it just me or do we all have a love-hate relationship with sewing necklines? Hi, sewing friends. I'm here with another Future Friday video, plus a little sewing resource for you about knit necklines. Before we dive into rating the range of sewing difficulty for these necklines, let's just acknowledge the elephant in the room and let's talk about the fact that that love-hate relationship that you might have with necklines, it can really make or break your sewing experience. And sometimes those necklines and neckbands and bindings and facings and all the finishing methods they seem to kind of like have a mind of their own. But fear not, we're gonna talk through these neckline options together and help you decide which neckline matches up with our current sewing levels. So today's feature pattern works in really nicely with this topic of necklines because Tara Tunic has tons of neckline options. There's actually six, and let's be honest, <laughs> sewing lets us add as many other types of necklines as we like when we're looking for something completely unique. So Tara is a tunic sewing pattern that features a straight fit. It's not too loose and it definitely has, um, it's like a little bit more straight fitting than our classic tee, for example. Um, it has a chunky hem with a front shorter than the back. And that means that the back is perfect for covering up the booty when you wear like leggings, for example. It also has options for welt pockets in the front and even cute little elbow patches. And this pattern is really versatile in your wardrobe because of those things. Now, the really exciting thing about Terra Tunic is that this pattern has six totally different fun to sew neckline finishings, as I said before. And this video is gonna help you decide the neckline finishing that fits best with your style as well as your sewing level from beginner to advanced. And I'll also add in a few other suggestions for each level as well, just to give you lots of ideas for what to sew next. At the end of this video, I'm also including a tutorial for this gorgeous boat ne neckline. So let's talk a little bit more about that love-hate relationship that some of us have with necklines. Sewing a knit top is usually a super straightforward business. It's quick, it's easy, and we love that. But then sometimes you get to the neckline. And when you think about it, the main sewing of the body is like pretty easy and simple. You sew the shoulder seams, you sew the sleeves, and you sew the side seams, and then you're basically done. But then you've got to get to the neckline. And the neckline can be the trickiest part of a sewing project. And that's often because it's like so up front and center. It's often gonna be the first thing that people can see and if they do, they might detect maybe a little wonkiness or some puckering and it might be the part that stops your make from looking professional. So it's hard to hide necklines and those issues that could come from maybe being inexperienced, having a fabric issue, um, maybe you've got a finicky machine that messes up or just some sewing bad luck. And when that neckline needs a little finessing, sometimes with the seam ripper or maybe even a little bit with some more math and modification, that's often the point at which we take that sewing project and we just throw it in the work in progress pile. So today's video, let's take a look, closer look at Tear Tunic and one of the love notions patterns that offers, like I said, a multitude of necklines. And we're gonna rate them from beginner friendly to advanced. And throughout this video, I'm going to rate each of these necklines on a difficulty scale and then add in a few neckline sewing tips for each of these different styles. And I'm also going to suggest a few patterns that fit into that um, sewing difficulty as well. So I hope that seeing this huge range of neckline options and the difficulty levels will give you a little bit more sewing knowledge and even a little bit of a confidence boost to tackle some of these necklines on your own in your own sewing. And as with anything, practice makes it easier with every make. Something that seems impossible now can quickly become manageable and even enjoyable and second nature after a few goes and some trial and error. And when it comes to sewing, 
typically, even the more advanced or intricate constructions are approachable when you just look at your tutorials like you're following a recipe. You follow the instructions, you practice it a couple times, and you've got another skill under your belt. So the first category, easy necklines. These are the necklines that any beginner who, or maybe even a confident beginner, can easily tackle as long as you've got some time, a positive attitude, and a good start with the proper fabrics and materials. For example, like a cooperative sewing machine. <laughs> For Terra Tunic, the necklines that fit into this easy category are scoop and funnel. So let's talk about what makes each of these types so approachable for anyone. So first of all, they are fast. Each of these necklines can be done in two passes through the sewing machine. Once to sew the short ends of the bands and then once more to attach it to the actual neckline opening. So easy peasy. But beware, even the simplest neckline can become a nightmare when we aren't using the right fabric. Like one that doesn't have the right stretch, or it has terrible recovery, or one that is cut off grain, or one that isn't sewn on with like evenly distributed stretch, um, or one that has gotten all stretched out with extra handling and pulling. And it can take some practice to learn how to mark and match up those quarter points and then put it through the machine without it getting stretched out or the opening getting stretched out or it getting puckers or ripples. So here are three ways I keep my necklines looking crisp and professional when I'm working with these easy kinds of necklines. Number one, I use pins and clips religiously. I sometimes skip pins and clips when I'm doing the side seams or the shoulders because everything kind of matches up well, but necklines, always. Number two, I use a basting stitch to attach the neckline um, at first, and then I double check it before sending it through my serger or finishing it up with another stitch. Number three, consider using a coordinating type of fabric that's meant for places like neckbands, like a ribbing material. So that's a type of fabric that's typically created to give exactly the right amount of stretch and it has a lot of forgiveness and it recovers really well after being stretched. So what are some other very easy knit necklines that you'll find in the Love Notions pattern library? So the scoop of the Rockford Raglan is great and the crew neck Sloan sweater. Um, also, I recommend the turtleneck or the cowl from the Arlington sweater. All great places to start. All right, now let's start getting a little bit more involved. And here are the intermediate necklines that most confident beginners or moderately experienced sewists will be able to find totally doable. For Terra Tunic, the intermediate difficulty necklines would be the V-neck hood, the asymmetrical, and the regular V-neck. So let's talk about what makes these types of necklines just a little bit of a step above the beginner level. So first of all, that V-neck. Getting a really well-sewn V-neck is a notorious pain um, for a lot of sewists. That little point, getting it even and flat, it can be really frustrating, especially if you have to do some seam ripping and then the opening of that V-neck neckline gets all stretched out. So for that style, I highly suggest watching Noreen's How to Sew a Perfect V-neck video. I'm gonna link it up here. It is exceptional and it goes through every step really thoroughly so that you can end up with a V-neck that you are totally proud of. A few of her tips um, suggest things like stay stitching the V shape, um, getting the right tension, and then also using a scrap of interfacing to keep everything sturdy. The asymmetrical neckline is also on the intermediate side, but it's a pretty straightforward approach. It just has a few more pieces and a few more steps and requires just a little bit more precision than a beginner neckline. For this style, you should be really careful to transfer those pattern markings, and you'll also need to overlap the collar pieces by one inch, and it's super important to like pin that in place carefully. And then, um, as you're going through all those layers, it can be hard to sew all over that overlap. So um, depending on the fabric type that you have, you might need to go through the sewing machine first and like hand crank it or use like your hump jumper. Um, and 
This view, um, it also has an option to use buttons, which can either be sewn on by hand or you could just use your sewing machine. So it's just a few more steps. Um, it's not necessarily hard steps. Um, another included more like medium level neckline finishing for Terra Tunic is that V-neck hood. Again, you've got that V-neck style, which can be kind of hard to get, um, but you've also got those extra pieces of the hood and the lining. Um, so it's not too difficult, but just more steps, more pattern pieces, and of course, more layers to sew through. Um, and that might need to be more carefully thought through um, along with your type of fabric and, you know, considering your sewing machine. So if you're looking for a totally approachable, but kind of interesting different neckline option, um, take a look at today's blog from Ilse. She shows off a split cowl modification, which is um, a little bit of a spin off of that asymmetrical collar and it's so cute. So what are some of the other medium difficulty necklines that are in the Love Notions library? The willow wrap dress finishing, that crossover V on the game day jersey, and the reverse shawl collar neckline on Olivia dress. Lastly, let's tackle the more intricate and advanced types of necklines. For Terra Tunic, that's the boat neck view. This view has a few extra steps. Um, some are a little bit more advanced sewing steps, um, more pattern pieces, like a facing, and it even requires some extra materials like interfacing and buttons. But for me, I love that classy and elegant view. So I think it's totally worth it. And again, as with anything, once you get it, the next ones will be even easier. So for this boat neck view, here are a few tips. Number one, make sure you're using a stable knit fabric. A silky, thin, shifty fabric, it just is not gonna work for this view. And I really do feel like the boat neck style lends itself to a more structured type of fabric. And number two, don't skip that interfacing. It is really necessary. And number three, there is an overlap on the shoulders on this view, and you're gonna wanna be careful to get the front shoulder going over the back shoulder. So you're gonna be overlapping them by one inch with the front topping the back. And the last boat neck tip is to watch the video at the end of this video for a really step-by-step -step clear view of sewing that boat neck version. So what are some other slightly more complicated necklines in the knit sewing pattern library at Love Notions? The shawl collar from Whistler, the button placket from Breckenridge Henley, and the Constellation hoodie. It's zippered, it's got a lined collar, and it's finished with bias tape, so it's just like a lot more steps. And while all of these have really great directions and lots of support, they might just take a little extra effort and a little bit more time. As you can see, there are tons of neckline styles and constructions throughout the Love Notions pattern library. These are some of our favorites, and now you know a little bit more about their construction techniques and my rating of the easiest to the hardest. Don't miss the upcoming visual, just coming up at the end of this video, um, for that boat neck view. And there is honestly no better pattern than Terra Tunic to hit all of those new fun sewing challenges um, in a way that's encouraging. So grab your copy today for our Friday feature special, and um, I'll link it below in the description box. If you like videos like this, please make sure to comment below and let me know if you want um, some discussion on the Love Notions woven neckline types. This was about knits, what about wovens? Um, so let me know if you want a video about that. And I hope that this Future Friday on knit necklines has given you some helpful tips and tricks for tackling tricky parts of the sewing project, that knit neckline. Remember, even the most challenging necklines can be conquered with practice, patience, and a positive attitude. Thanks for tuning in and happy sewing. Let's sew the boat neck version of the Terra Tunic from Love Notions together. The boat neck version can be a little tricky, so I'm going to show you how to sew it today using pages 18 and 19 of the tutorial. And I'm using this baby French Terry with the long sleeve option and the boat neck version of the pattern. It's critical that you transfer all the markings, especially from the arm side and around all the pattern pieces onto the fabric. I like using this Madeira Magic Pen to do that.
Next, I'm cutting out my inner facing and my pieces for the front facing and the back facing to make that boat neck. I'm going to cut one on my main fabric and one from an inner facing. I'm using a stiffer inner facing here because I like it to have a really structured look. Um, so I'm going to cut one unfold for the front facing and one unfold for the back facing. Keep in mind, these pieces are pretty different shapes, so do not switch them up. Next, we're going to align this front facing right sides together with the front bodice piece right along the neckline. I repeat with the back neckline, align that back facing to the back neckline. And then we're going to straight stitch this. So as we straight stitch along this neckline piece, we need to make sure that we're using a 3-8 seam allowance. It's really important to get those seam allowances correct on this pattern. I use this little um, seam gauge right next to my um, scissors here, so I never have to guess what three-eighths of a uh, seam allowance looks like. So I've stitched along the shoulders and I have stitched along the neckline with a three-eighths seam allowance on both the front and on the back facing as it attaches to the front and back pieces, shoulders, neckline. And the next thing I'm gonna do is clip these corners right here so that it'll turn really nicely. Now it's time to turn this right side out. So I'm gonna put my thumb inside and I'm gonna wrap this around and help this poke through. So you can see, and you can even stick a little something inside there or use a point to turner. Just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Turn to the other side, stick your thumb in, push it forward, wiggle it around until everything is flat inside. I've given everything a really good press and this is what the inside looks like. There's their seam allowance there. We've got our facing attached. And you could do some understitching in here, but I just want to show you the boat neck assembly right now. All right, I went ahead and top stitched. So I have that all set, ready to go. And now we're going to assemble the boat neck pieces together. So first we're going to start with the back piece with its facing, wrong sides up. Here's the arm side. Here's the markings. That's the top of the shoulder. Here's our facing piece. Then we're going to lay on top of it wrong sides together, the front piece with its facing. We're gonna match up the arm size. I'm gonna place that on top. And then we're going to fold the back piece under, underneath the front piece by about an inch. So I'm gonna use my guide here to find an inch right here. So we're gonna have this guy come down right about, right about there. Keep on facing both sides. So that's what it looks like. You're gonna keep your front piece over the back piece and it overlaps by about one inch. So if you look here, this is overlapped by about one inch. All right, now let's lay these pieces together, wrong sides together. This is the back, this is the front. I've matched them up at the bottom of the arm side. If you line this up here, there is about an inch of space here extra on the back. And you're not going to fold it over the front. You're going to fold it behind the front piece. And when you do that, it looks about like that. Here. So that's a one inch overlap with the back piece underneath the front piece. The front piece is over a one inch fold of the back piece. Clip that in place, and now we're going to baste this arm side right here so that this all stays the correct shape. So there should be a one inch overlap with the front over the folded over back. So I'm going to go baste that. You can decide on what buttons you want here, and you can sew them in now. Um, I haven't really decided yet, so I'm going to save these for later. Now it's time to attach the sleeve. Remember that you need to really carefully look for those markings and match up the double markings to double markings, as well as the single markings to the single markings over on the other side.
Okay, so here's the finished product. I have everything pressed. I have my buttons sewn on and I have um, everything assembled here. So you can see there is a one inch overlap with the front over the back. Um, the arm came together nicely. I didn't have any extra fabric with um, matching the sleeve and the arm side together. Um, I'm using a baby French Terry fabric. Um, keep in mind that fabric can shift and grow while you work with it. So that can result in some issues. So be careful with that. And um, I'm going to go try this on now and see how I like it.